Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, first session of uh, the two days webinar under the CASI project. My name is Zoya Damianova. And uh, in this first introductory session, uh, I will be uh, the moderator of the session as well as the first uh, person to present, uh, to give you a brief introduction to the CASI project and as well as uh, my colleague, Blagovesta Chonkova, uh, who will uh, present uh, to you uh, briefly why sustainability today is uh, the main driver <clears throat> uh, for innovation and economic activities. Uh, so before I start the presentation uh, on the CASI project, I would like to make two announcements. Uh, you can send questions to me and to Blagovesta using the chat function and it's uh, on the right hand bottom of the screen. And the questions will be um, collected by our host. Uh, and uh, this is uh, Mattia Martini by uh, the University of Milan Bicocca. And then in the end of the session, uh, we will receive these questions as presenters and we will answer the questions. Also, once the session is formally closed, you will automatically be redirected to a link where uh, you will find a short questionnaire. And I very kindly ask you to answer the questions in this questionnaire. Uh, now, uh, please allow me to start the introductory uh, presentation. Uh, of, uh, of CASI. This is the content of uh, the presentation, just a brief overview, what are the challenges which we as a consortium face, uh, how CASI relates to the sustainable development activities of the European Union, the objectives of the project and the CASI team. The full title of this ambitious project is uh, Public Participation in Developing a Common Framework for Assessment and Management of Sustainable Innovation. Uh, this is a project which is supported by the Science and Society program of the Seventh Framework program. And as a consortium, we applied under the very last call of the Science and Society in 2013 under the topic mobilization and mutual learning action plans, mainstreaming science and society actions in research. Um, you also know already uh, the CASI website, casi2020.eu. What are the challenges uh, which we ha have uh, identified at the very onset of the project and which we face as a consortium in which we uh, address in uh, our project. The first one is the Grand Societal Challenge 5 of Horizon 2020. It's climate action, environment, resource efficiency, and raw materials. So CASI as a project is focused on studying sustainable innovation in this uh, grand challenge on climate action. Why sustainable innovation? Sustainable innovation, uh, first, it's interchangeably used in uh, the policy and in the research discourse with green innovation, with eco-innovation, environmental innovation, but still, it remains um, quite under-researched field. And of course, we need to further investigate. Uh, while we still need more research on sustainability of technological innovation, Sustainability of social innovation uh, somehow is a completely new paradigm. And so far, there is no universally accepted definition of sustainable uh, innovation. And more sus uh, sustainability considerations are not really adequately addressed yet by the private uh, sector, by the businesses, and this is very, very true and very challenging to be 
uh, addressed um, in the sector of uh, the small and medium-sized enterprises and SMEs in Europe, they comprise almost 99% of all enterprises in the European Union. Another challenge that uh, we address with the CASI project is public engagement in sustainable innovation and we still have insufficient engagement of the wider society in research and innovation activities and as well as in research and innovation governance. Uh, how CASI relates to the EU sustainable uh, development agenda? Back in 2006, um, the sustainable, sustainable development strategy of the EU outlined several guiding principles of sustainable development. I'm not going to comment on all of them because this is not um, the objective of my presentation. I just would like to draw your attention to the principle of involvement of citizens. And this principle stands for enhancing the participation of citizens in decision making. So this is one of the challenges that we uh, have already uh, stated in CASI. In Europe 2020 strategy for smart, sustainable and inclusive growth, there are three mutually reinforcing priorities which have been uh, put forward by the strategy is smart growth, sustainability, sustainable growth, and inclusive growth. So sustainability is on the current Europe 2020 agenda. Also in Horizon 2020, this is the strategic program of the Union um, for research and innovation until 2020, uh, we have in the regulation um, the following. Climate action and resource efficiency are mutually reinforcing objectives for achieving sustainable development. And at least 60% of the overall budget of Horizon 2020 should be related to sustainable development. And it is also expected that climate-related expenditures should exceed 35% of the budget. Now, what are the objectives that uh, we have uh, set with uh, our uh, CASI project, the objectives that we aim to achieve uh, throughout the uh, course of the project? These are five specific objectives. The first one is to develop a working definition of sustainable innovation, thus addressing uh, the challenge of uh, not having a common, uh, commonly agreed concept and definition of sustainable innovation. The second specific objective is the inclusion of general public concerns in uh, assessing the societal impact of this kind of innovation and issues such as participation uh, in the development of innovation, inclusiveness, ethics, gender, open access are all considered. The third objective is to develop a common understanding of good practices in sustainable, in sustainable innovation management. The next objective is to develop a framework for assessment and management of sustainable innovation and in the end of the project to develop specific policy recommendations to DG Research and Innovation of the European Commission, uh, which supports the project. So uh, our CASI team, uh, it is a collaboration of 19 partners. We come from 12 member states of the European Union. And we bring together, the, uh, the CASI project brings together two municipalities, seven business companies, four NGOs, six universities. Our work is further supported by a network of country experts, we call them country correspondents, in the remaining six EU countries, which are not represented by partners in the CASI consortium. And in this way, we achieve a full coverage of the EU member states. We are further supported by an advisory committee of seven prominent experts coming from uh, EU. 
and CAT is coordinated by our organization, the Applied Research and Communications Fund. We are a non-governmental organization and we are based in Sofia in Bulgaria. The project uh, will run uh, until end of June 2017 and uh, we have so far during the two years of uh, working on, on the project, uh, we have so far achieved um, quite many results which will be shared with you during the seven sessions of uh, this webinar today and tomorrow. And these seven sessions will give you an overview of how we address the five objectives and how we achieve the five objectives with the activities under the project. Uh, I hope that you will really enjoy uh, the webinar today and tomorrow and the findings that we will share with you during these two days will be useful in your uh, work. So. Thank you for your attention and now I am pleased to um, give the floor, this virtual floor, to my colleague Blavovesta Chongova. Hello everybody, I'm Blavovesta Chongova again from ARC Fund. First I'm going to share a presentation with you, a few slides I have prepared. I'm really glad I will be able to talk to you about this important and interesting topic of why is sustainability a driver of innovation today? Just a few seconds to um, load the presentation. So just a second, yes, I hope you are now able to see it. Uh, yes, as I mentioned, the topic is why is sustainability a driver of innovation today? The content of my presentation is the following. I'm going to focus on three major uh, issues. These are innovation in the business sector, social innovation, and a very relevant uh, topic to this presentation, circular economy. And later on, I'm going to tell you a short story instead of providing a conclusion. Um, before starting, I would like to bring your thoughts more into this um, topic of uh, resource efficiency, innovation, uh, with a few interesting facts I found out. Did you know that 92% of, um, of uh, time cars in Europe are parked? Uh, also, interesting thing is that in the remaining 8%, only 1.5 of the five uh, seats in cars are occupied. Uh, in the field of food, one third of food is wasted along the value chain. Um, European offices are used less than half of the time, which is also something uh, which was interesting to read. Uh, these um, these uh, inefficiencies bring around 7.3, 7.2 trillion euro of um, uh, annual costs to the European economy only in the sectors of mobility, food, and housing. Uh, in the recent years, fortunately, more and more businesses are realizing that in order to stay competitive, resource efficiencies and other sustainability challenges need to be addressed. Environmental challenges are at the heart of uh, sustainability consideration. Um, today, innovation means doing more with less resources instead of what was uh, rather the case in the past, doing more with more and cheaper resources. Besides the environmental challenges, there are also social and financial constraints, which define the landscape of opportunities for and threats for businesses across industries. Some global trends which, um, which define the way business is, business is done today, but also affect all other societal stakeholders, societal actors such as policymakers, researchers, citizens as well, 
are the growing global population, the growing demand in the, in the emerging economies, uh, the growing demand of the increasingly affluent uh, middle class in the emerging economies, and the um, more and more aging, the, the aging population in some parts of the world. Um, sustainable innovation is uh, central to addressing these sustainability challenges. This is what CASI is about, as you heard in the previous presentation, so I'm not going to go into details about it. Just for the purposes of this presentation, I would like to give you a short definition of what we understand, what I mean with sustainable innovation in this presentation. Uh, I would like to mention that um, uh, currently the consortium of CASI is in the process of developing a working definition of sustainable innovation. Um, but as said, for the purposes of this presentation, I, um, uh, uh, what we understand with sustainable innovation in this presentation is creating new or improved products, services, technologies, processes, and management techniques that produce environmental or social benefits along the value, along with economic value. As you can notice, uh, sustainable innovation rests on the three pillars of sustainability, the uh, economic, social, and environmental ones, and takes into account uh, the economic, environmental, and social impact of uh, the developed products, services, technologies, processes, and so on, uh, which is not just at the end of their lifetime, but also throughout the life cycle of the of the given product service and etc sustainable innovation uh, can be both business oriented originating in the business sector uh, or social socially oriented the so called social innovation um, first i'm going to talk about the innovation in the business sector we have identified four major factors which sustainability related factors which drive innovation today. The first one is complying with existing regulation uh, and, or anticipating future regulations. Uh, multiple examples demonstrate that companies that are forerunners in, um, in um, complying with the, uh, existing regulations are the first ones to spot new business opportunities and expand into new business niches ahead of others. Regulations are different in the different on the different markets. Often for companies, it is tempting to adhere to the lowest environmental standards for as long as possible, although it is smarter for companies to comply with the most stringent regulations even before they have been put into force. Anticipating emerging regulations gives companies more time to experiment and um, at the end a competitive advantage over their rivals. One concrete example here is um, um, Hewlett Packard. Uh, in the 1990s, the company realized that uh, because lead is uh, toxic, lead which is used in their uh, products, is toxic, um, it might one day be banned by regulators, which actually happens, happened with the European Directive from 2006. So in the 1990s, the company started experimenting with new substances to replace lead in their products. When the regulation was put into force in 2006, they could, early, uh, they could uh, comply with it in a timely manner earlier than a lot of competitors. Another driver of innovation related to sustainability is the cost savings which are generated from improved resource efficiency in companies. Innovations resulting in better resource efficiencies lead to reduced material and energy use per unit output, which uh, reduces the cost for companies. However, innovations need not be technological in order to save resources. Uh, there are uh, multiple workplace innovation cases, such as, for example, the flexible working hours, which uh, uh, allow employ employees to find a more effective balance between their uh, work life and uh, private life, but at the same time reduce environmental footprint and office expenses. 
There are also new business models, such as, for example, collecting valuable electronic waste that would otherwise go into the landfills, uh, which also adds to the uh, sustainability of companies. Besides bringing um, uh, business opportunities and saving resources in companies, resource efficiency also aggregates sectoral and economic-wide economic -wide, uh, savings, which allow for redirecting resources to other priority areas. Social pressure is a strong motive for companies nowadays as well to uh, produce more sustainably. This is social pressure from environmentally cautious consumers that express preferences for cleaner products. Practices which seemed legitimate in the past are, are uh, nowadays bringing unexpected liabilities to companies due to the shifts in preferences and values of the consumers and their uh, increasing sustainability concerns. Cases of labor abuses or environmental damages translate into financial terms for companies nowadays. Besides acting more sustainably, um, companies also can help uh, environmentally cautious consumers themselves being more sustainable by designing products and services uh, uh, sustainable products and services. Uh, for example, a cold water detergent allows households to save electricity for heating water. Supply chain pressure is another factor um, which um, drives innovation among suppliers. Often companies want to produce sustainable products by working in collaboration with suppliers and retailers to develop eco-friendly materials and components and reduce waste. This trend induces suppliers to become environmentally cautious by offering them incentives. One such example is a program um, implemented by Siemens. It's called the Energy Efficiency Program for Suppliers of Siemens, which uh, allows suppliers to perform environment and energy checks um, online via an, an online survey and also helps them to identify opportunities how they can reduce uh, the energy they use and resources they use um, in their work. Um, the next slide and the next thing I'm going to talk about is SMEs. While doing research for this presentation, uh, the, I found out that most articles um, on the topic talk about large companies with huge uh, amounts of financial and human resources. However, I asked myself what about the small and small and medium enterprises that don't have such uh, market power and uh, have just limited resources. Taking into account that 99% of all enterprises in Europe and uh, 85 percent of new jobs are created within these enterprises, as well as two-thirds of the total private sector employment. Um, it uh, means that uh, uh, the transition to uh, green growth and to sustainable economy co can only happen with the participation of SMEs, only if SMEs adopt sustainable practices. Uh, after specifically looking for information on this topic, I found out that there are there is research about this and there are cases which demonstrate that sustainable development is a major catalyst for innovation in SMEs as well. Some research also suggests that SMEs can have competitive advantage over larger firms because of their flexible firm structure, specialization of activities, and the ability to react to new opportunities quicker. Um, so social um, social uh, sustainability is also uh, of crucial importance for SMEs because uh, they often uh, market themselves uh, uh, on the local market. Therefore, the strong connection with the local communities is uh, very important for their success. Um, social innovation, as I mentioned before, is also sustainable innovation, but I'm not going to go into details here because there is a separate session on social innovation later on. It's on at uh, 2.30 today from the Technical University in Dortmund. But I would like to stress on the close relationship between, uh, between sustainability and social innovation. 
social innovation has been defined by the European Commission as the development and implementation of new ideas, products, services, and models to meet social needs and create new social relationships or collaborations. Addressing societal challenges and forging new partnerships is therefore are therefore the two um, uh, characteristic features of sustainable innovation. And sustainable solutions, uh, we believe, can only be can can best be identified in collaboration with all affected stakeholders. In this. Uh, collaboration and in the new uh, in the constellation new constellations of partners social innovation is born uh, and therefore we find a very it is part of sustainable innovation and it is very important part so I really recommend you um, taking part in the session later today social innovation deals with uh, sustainability issues such as poverty limited access to good quality education, environmental issues, employment, and so on. Uh, circular economy is a uh, um, concept which is also very closely related to sustainability. And um, uh, um, uh, an interesting concept to, to talk about and to read about. The circular economy aims to eradicate waste throughout the life cycles and uses of products and their components. In contrast to the linear, linear model of economy, take, make, dispose, it, uh, the circular economy relies on tight components and product cycles of use and reuse, as well as product uh, or service design, which reduces the environmental footprint of the, produce, of the products and services. A very interesting report by the Elon MacArthur Foundation from uh, June 2015 this year, which is entitled Growth Within a Circular Economy Vision for a Competitive Europe, compares the future state of the economy uh, uh, following the current development path, as well as a future scenario where the economy abides to the principles of circular economy. The study finds out that uh, there will be enormous environmental, social, and economic benefits from following the path of circular economy and innovating with the purpose of, uh, of um, developing a circular economy in Europe. Uh, the, environmental, uh, the environmental benefits from uh, following this path would be improving the resource productivity of the European economy with up to 3% on an annual basis, decreasing CO2 emissions with 83% by 2015, and reducing primary material consumption with up to 32% by 2030 and 53% by 2050. Altogether, this will amount to uh, economic a benefit of 1.8 trillion euro and an increase of GDP with seven percentage points rel relative to the current development path scenario. Uh, in addition to this, new jobs will be created because of the increased spending allowed by the efficiency generated by lower prices. Innovation is key to moving uh, to, to, to the transition to a circular economy and achieving great sustainability. Besides technological innovation, the report argues that new novel business models are needed, which maximize the value extracted from the existing resources in use by circulating and utilizing products, components, and materials in use. There are, uh, these are, for example, the sharing platforms we know, uh, also designing goods that uh, have an expanded product lifetime. The second approach that the, um, the report, the study uh, argues uh, in favor is fostering system effectiveness by revealing negative externalities and efficiencies and designing products which will minimize this. Um, a very interesting book I came across of Daniel Goleman argues uh, exactly for the same approach uh, saying that measuring and making negative environmental impacts known um, will uh, will urge consumers and businesses 
um, act more sustainably, innovate and create positive change. The book is called Ecological Intelligence, if somebody is interested. Uh, and the last thing I want to, to uh, mention is a very um, interesting um, story I came across recently. It's the story of the Red Act flag, uh, which, was, uh, which was implemented in the UK in the year 1865 and 1890, between 1865 and 1896. The Act stipulates that owners of automobiles had to employ a man to walk, as you can see on the picture in front of automobiles, to uh, alert pedestrians of the danger from the automobile crossing the road. The story comes to exemplify how resistant incumbent industries and producers can be to groundbreaking technologies and how instead of trying to transform their business models and production to adapt to the new circumstances and capitalize on the technological transition, they often fight against it and lobby against it. Making analogy with the sustainability driven innovation, sustainability challenges are here to stay. They're not going to go, to go away. So all stakeholders, businesses, policymakers, researchers need to adapt, up, uh, adapt to the new circumstances and act upon uh, to uh, create um, um, an environment, economic, and social, uh, better environmental, economic, and social reality nowadays. So this was my presentation. I hope it was interesting for you. Thank you for your attention. Here is my, uh, here are the sources which I used uh, in preparing this presentation. Um, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Blaga, for this very uh, lively presentation. Uh, so, uh, so far, I have received uh, several questions. I will read them one by one. Uh, <clears throat> the first question is, when you speak about business sector, do you include also non-profit social enterprise? Uh, well, when speaking about business sector uh, in the CASI project, uh, we mean SMEs and large businesses which work for profit. Uh, Non-profit and social enterprises, of course, they are in the focus of the project. We invite them to our events, we collaborate with them, but they have a bit different mission. For instance, um, in Bulgaria, according to our legislation, social enterprises uh, can be non-profit organizations. Now, on the second question, uh, which are the main results achieved by CASI coming from the public involvement and participation? Uh, some of these results will be uh, will be shared with you in the following sessions of uh, the webinar, but I can give you here some aggregated figures. Uh, first of all, at, uh, at the levels of engagement in CASI, uh, we have informing and dialogue, we have consulting and involving citizens and stakeholders, we have collaborating uh, for working out uh, recommendations and policy advice. And we also have empowering through presenting these uh, policy recommendations, policy advice in the end of the project uh, to DG research and innovation. About the overall engagement approach of CASI, it is characterized by multi-actor engagement Next, by cross-country engagement, because we work with citizens and stakeholders in 12 uh, EU member states. We have also a very diversified portfolio of engagement methods, and we have combination of online and face-to-face -face methods. Now, just to name some of the engagement methods that we uh, apply in CASI, we have face-to-face -face meetings, for instance, interviews with actors, 
related to sustainable um, innovation, we have citizen panels, we had an expert panel, uh, we have stakeholder consultative workshops in the 12 member states which are uh, involved in uh, or presented by the CASI consortium partners in the consortium. We will organize a mobilizing and mutual learning seminars in the very uh, beginning of 2016, uh, sorry. Um, and we will have next year research and policy uh, conference. We may maintain an online blog on um, the website of the project, etc. Now, about the target groups uh, with which we work and which we engage in the project, these are citizens, the average uh, people, just like uh, all of us. Uh, we work with uh, innovators, businesses, social enterprises, local authorities. We work with experts in climate-related issues, experts in engagement methods, experts working on uh, innovation-related issues. We work with stakeholders and policymakers, and a very strong actor with uh, which we work. This is the Enterprise Europe Network, which is presented uh, not only in Europe, but also beyond Europe and involves more than 600 organizations. Now, uh, so far, um, summary of uh, the results which we have achieved through engagement methods, we have as a consortium, plus with the support uh, coming by uh, our country correspondents, we have identified 537 you know, sustainable innovation practices. And out of these 537, we have mapped in depth 193 practices, and you can find these 193 practices uh, on our website, casi2020.eu, under the so-called Casipedia section. Um, we have organized so far uh, two rounds of meetings of uh, citizens' panels in uh, the 12 EU member states presented in the consortium. We have mobilized 250 citizens from 12 EU member states. They worked out 50 visions for sustainable future development. There's, then these 50 visions were presented to 22 prominent experts from Europe. And they worked with the visions and came up with 27 research priorities uh, on new and emerging issues. And these 27 research priorities have been again presented to these 12 citizen panels and they voted. And now we have a list with top 10 research priorities out of these 27, which we will work out more in depth and we plan to present them by April next year to the European Commission DG Research and Innovation so that they can consider them um, in uh, the last cycle of programming Horizon 2020 for 2018-2020. Uh, Further, we have worked um, 14 uh, EU level policy briefs. This is an ongoing activity throughout the project and will continue until June 2017 when the project ends. We have worked so far more than 80 national level policy uh, briefs on topics related to sustainable innovation. The online policy block, we have uh, more than 25 posts and these have generated more than 35,000 feedbacks. We organized, as well as the consortium, uh, 12 stakeholder uh, consultative workshops, and we mobilized 140 stakeholders across Europe to discuss uh, the framework for uh, assessment and management of sustainable innovation, uh, a draft version of it. And we also organized, in the first half of this year, an expert-based online survey on the characteristics of sustainable innovation uh, coming up with close to 1,800 respondents in total. So, as you can see, uh, we have a variety of activities which uh, are quite diverse, um, complementing uh, each other. 
Uh, so by the end of uh, CASI in one and a half year from now, with uh, the activities we have implemented so far and the activities which come up on our agenda as a project, we expect that we will have mobilized more than 3,000 citizens, experts, uh, stakeholders, policymakers from across Europe to discuss uh, the issues related to sustainable innovation in the domain of climate change. Now, the next question is where the results of CASI project will be available all results as soon as they are uh, in their final for publication uh, form uh, will be available on the website of the project. Some of the results are already there and more resu results are to come and keep an eye on the website because 2016 is the year which will be uh, the year most rich in publications uh, of results and analysis of uh, results because uh, it's normally that in the first half of the project we have implemented a lot of activities, we have generated a lot of data and now it's time you know to analyze and publish the results. Uh, let me see other uh, okay one more question popped up I think your emphasis on SMEs is really interesting and very relevant, but as sustainability is often costly, how can SMEs keep up when they don't necessarily have the financial resources that large companies do? Uh, well, I think this is a question which is uh, more relevant to the uh, Enterprise Europe Network um uh, but let me just share it with uh, Blaga. Uh, she might also have uh, some ideas. I hope you can hear me. Uh, yes, this is an interesting aspect of the question. Unfortunately, I'm not able to um, to tell you more details about this, about the financial, uh, the, the cost of uh, um, being sustainable for SMEs. Um, yeah, more, I think more research needs to be done in this direction. What is uh, currently available as research, as I already mentioned, mostly focuses on large companies. And this is uh, actually, I also thought about what the, the person that asked this question asked. I couldn't find information about this, how SMEs uh, can financially um, um, uh, become more sustainable and introduce sustainability practices. More research needs to be done in this direction. And um, yes, we'll keep an eye on it. And uh, um, maybe it will be something that will be investigated also uh, in the CASI project later on. And uh, yeah, we, you will be able to see in our deliverables. Uh, thank you, Blaga. Uh, well, based on uh, our experience, uh, there are, especially at the national level, there are uh, many, many programs which support SMEs. It's not only the European programs, but the more relevant programs for, uh, you know, helping SMEs uh, to go towards um, towards sustainability in their business practices. Uh, I think that the national programs focused on innovation and SMEs are more relevant, but otherwise uh, it's definitely the Enterprise Europe network uh, that can help companies, especially SMEs in this uh, direction. So uh, I'm waiting for another question. Do you think an outcome of the project could be a kind of modal vision of sustainable innovations for SMEs they can use as a basis for their efforts to integrate sustainable innovation in their business practice? Uh, okay, to this question, um, 
Thank you for it, first of all. Uh, we have as uh, one of the major outcomes of the project uh, a framework for assessment and management of sustainable innovation. And the framework uh, is based uh, on a variety of information sources, but um, the major source of uh, this framework are the sustainable innovation practices which we have identified and which we uh, have analyzed. And so <clears throat> a model vision for sustainable innovation, I don't think that this is possible because as you know, each project has its mandate. Uh, but what I can uh, I can inform you at this very moment is that this framework for assessment and management of sustainable innovation is designed so that it can help uh, not only companies but other stakeholders in their efforts uh, to go on on the sustainability. Uh, to go into the sustainability direction in their business practices. And this framework, uh, once it is applied, uh, it, it will be very, very user-friendly, easy to follow, easy to apply, so that it can help SMEs identify simple actions, which are not going to be costly, so that they can start, you know, um, changing or developing their business towards uh, achieving uh, more sustainability in their business practice. So I hope I answered the question. If not, just uh, let us know when we can uh, reply to the participants in, in writing as well. Okay, I received the message that um, there are no more no more questions. Um, well, thank you very much for, uh, for your uh, time. There are two questions uh, on which I hope that you will find uh, answers today and tomorrow in the following sessions of, uh, of the webinar, especially both questions. Uh, I, I would recommend uh, the next session, which is State of the Art of Sustainable Innovation. And I will also recommend the sessions, which are uh, tomorrow, session six, a common framework for assessment and management of sustainable innovation. And the next session, which is uh, focused on how to apply the framework to a case of sustainable innovation. So thank you uh, for your participation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Blaga, also for your presentation. And thanks, Matia, for hosting uh, the first session of the webinar. I wish you a very successful day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.